Hi, everybody. This is David Nevins for City Biz List. And today we continue with uh, another in our series of interviews on behalf of the Bridge Alliance, which we're calling Fixing America's Broken Democracy. So today's guest is Dr. Ivan Douglas Hicks, Dr. Ivan Douglas Hicks. And he uh, founded an organization called the Ministerium. And uh, they're based in Indianapolis, Indiana, if I'm not mistaken. Welcome, Dr. Hip Hicks, to our program. Well, thank you for having me on today. I would like to thank as well the Bridge Alliance for uh, the invitation to uh, come and be with you all on today. Terrific, terrific. So, Dr. Hicks, uh, we have a national audience, uh, hopefully some of them in Indiana, but the rest uh, may be uh, all around the country. Tell us a little bit about the work of the Ministerium, how you came to start such an organization, and uh, what its goals and objectives are. Certainly. Uh, the Ministerium began a few years ago with uh, a number of uh, clergy persons, uh, actually four of us, uh, men, uh, clergy persons in the Indianapolis area that looked a lot like me. Uh, we said that we wanted to ensure that we uh, came out of uh, sometimes our own uh, silos and that we work together on what we distinguish to be uh, the issues that the prophet of old was concerned about, vanguarding the causes of widows and children. Um, and so we said, look, with all of our uh, positions and uh, priorities with our own ministries and uh, even sometimes our own egos, let's, let's make sure we're doing what we're supposed to do to ensure that those that can easily fight for themselves have somebody to vanguard their causes. And so, uh, you know, quite a noble cause, no question about it. Tell us a little bit about, uh, I know the, the organization has grown since you established it with your three other colleagues. So where are you today? And, and share some specifics, if you don't mind, Dr. Hicks, about your good works in the community. Oh, so, so now we have grown uh, so that we have reached well beyond that original group, uh, our first uh, growth notion, even on that day, was that we would have an opportunity to find anybody other than ourselves. Uh, anybody that perhaps does not look like us, think like us, and even ideologically, we have to uh, transcend, go across whatever the aisle and break through whatever barrier uh, there is that keeps us from pooling together our resources, our collective assets um, and our energy so that we can uh, do work. We began uh, then to think about how we could be most effective. And historically we noticed that, uh, that if you want to really change things, uh, certainly the documentation is found in the shift in public policy. And so uh, there's litigation, there's legislation, um, that those are ways that we see historical change memorialized. And so we said that the best thing for us to do is uh, to uh, work at the state level. So we began uh, not as immediately as we did to un other people, but we began to reach out around the state to ensure that that proverbial letter that comes to a state legislator on a particular issue uh, does not simply come from Marion County and from people in one homogenous group, uh, but that letter comes from everyone around the state. Um, and we found ourselves to be impactful. The first year we began sort of in a scholastic way well, we began uh, that first year, uh, we began uh, by getting together with the faith community to have what we call a faith community consultation. Uh, we uh, made quick friends with the folk at the United Way that were dealing with uh, pre-K uh, because we determined that education was the great social issue of our day uh, and that everybody loves babies, so let's start there. Um, and so we began to work with the United Way and pulled together an educational consultation event that pulled together the advocacy community of the area and other educational advocates. And at that time, Dr. Gwen Kelly from the Children's Policy and Law Initiative uh, was invited to come and she gave a presentation on a Senate bill that was uh, intended uh, as a reactionary bill, but the, the uh, bill would take 12 and 13 year olds to jail as and with adults. And so that's children. Um, and so we were able to fight um, in very uh, interesting ways. Uh, 
that first year and we pooled resources and we uh, used influence and we had conversations and did some high low things and did a, uh, had a, led a campaign to ensure that 279 did not pass. The next year, uh, Senator Hutchins came back with the same uh, type of bill, but this time, as opposed to just taking kids to jail as 12 and 13 year olds uh, for uh, for attempted murder, she added 10 more uh, things that you could go to jail for at, at, at the age of 12 and 13. We fought it again. This year, we were able to see that Senate Bill 368 did pass, and that was a positive bill that we were able to support with positive language and positive energy uh, so that we are not just fighting against, we're fighting for uh, now not just pre-K, but uh, children's, not just uh, not children's uh, justice reform, not juvenile, but children, because these, these are children. Uh, mom and infant mortality and lead are our children's issues that we're working on right now. I saw also, Dr. Hicks, I guess this is what you are have just been talking about, that um, the ministerium is very involved in advocacy and advocacy training. Talk a little bit about how you do that. It, 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 do you talk about those things? Uh, in your respective congregations? Um, how, how does that work? Well, so the ministerium is a group among clergy. And so, so we strategize among clergy and we have the ability to educate, but then also mobilize our congregations for specific things. Uh, sometimes it is to be physical and to be in person, but certainly in this, uh, what I call intra-corona period we're in right now, uh, we have to, um, and we're challenged to be even more technological and creative then in the ways in which we do uh, social justice and advocacy. And so, uh, so we have an opportunity, and, and once again, in a pensive way, I believe, but certainly in a systematic way, we had a faith community consultation. We brought folk together. We added uh, children, children's issues to uh, children's juvenile justice issues. We added that to pre-K. That following summer, we had a lot of advocacy training because many had never been involved in advocacy work. Or, or even formal advocacy work. And we all need to improve our skills if we are old advocates, right? Um, and so we went through a process of training preachers um, and that carries over to congregations. Uh, but at the same time, we looked uh, at what uh, legislation was coming down the pike and what was your main or keyed in on these children's uh, widow, most vulnerable issues and uh, we start with a big list in triage, and we've been making relationships internally uh, with an internal coalition of uh, corporate America and the advocacy community working together, as well reaching out throughout the state to make sure the tentacles of the ministerium uh, reach out. But once again, we have the influence that comes from around the state and to ensure that that folk don't just look like uh, me, but they look like uh, the, uh, the uh, Hollywood squares that we see here today. Um, they look like um, the kingdom of God. And I believe that's how we're effective. And that's how we bring the kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. So, uh, Dr. X, I, I, you're saying that it was important in terms of success that the ministerium has had that you you called upon and gotten together representatives, obviously, of, of multiple religions. Um, are they all religious leaders or other um, community leaders as well? We say it like this, that we are leaders of congregations. Uh, so not just churches, but we're leaders of congregations. Uh, but we're also faith leaders because what I've discovered is that uh, lay people and uh, sometimes uh, empowered, uh, sometimes directed lay people can be even more so effective than trying to get the big person or the person with the title if you have the person that uh, has the dispatch of the person with the title uh, and you're a lay person, then uh, you can be effective if your passion is there and your heart is there. And so we have wonderful lay people that are involved in what we do, uh, certainly pastors um, uh, from every denomination and every faith. Uh, they have come together around these singular issues, uh, poverty and making sure that we bring relief to those that need it and to fight for those that can't easily fight for themselves. Again, uh, wonderful causes and again, kudos on the success that you have had. Uh, uh, Dr. Hicks, given the success that you've had, um, what are your plans, if any, to um, 
replicate uh, the ministerium's activities around the country in other states? How are you helping your uh, ministerial colleagues around the country uh, jump on the bandwagon, so to speak? We, we have an organization uh, that I started maybe about 10 years ago called The Grindery that helps businesses get up and going. You can find us at thegrindery.org. But The Grindery uh, is teaching everybody that uh, as you begin your business, even if it's a local business with this technology, you need to make sure that you are at least seeking to market to a billion people, uh, to 10 billion people, that, that the entire world through this technology uh, can in some way uh, engage and, and you can then use that as your enterprise. I think it's the same way with the ministerium. And so um, it, it, in a practical way, we began uh, at, in a coffee shop with four people. Uh, now we're moving out throughout the state. And I think that there are fractals. I think that there are, uh, there are people doing like things around the country. And I have pastor friends and college friends and people that are not just clergy persons, but good people of faith people that, that are, are of goodwill that are around the country. And uh, if we could, a fame, uh, one, one of those movies says, uh, one band, one sound, if we could be synchronized, if we could learn to move uh, as, 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 as one, um, then there are um, not just lofty and spiritual things, but there's some practical, pragmatic things that we could do to affect national politics. And we've seen that there are world situations with this pandemic. There are things that we all need to be unified because we all share the same human experience. Given um, your success, Dr. Hicks, uh, in influencing public policy uh, and the like in Indiana, have you, uh, what's your next objective? Are you, is, are your colleagues working on something else in Indiana that you're, uh, ready to share. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about that. I'm shy of an absolute success. I hope that the ministerium and then me personally, I certainly think that our work has, has sought to help um, the success of, of the movements that are taking place and the changes and the legislation this past uh, legislative session that did not move forward and um, some specific uh, conversations once again that are ethical and moral conversations. There are, there, there is a, there is maybe hopefully a space in the heart uh, for people to hear from God and maybe through their agents with a collective voice, maybe we have an opportunity to talk to legislators and to have private conversations and uh, without ego and without the need for uh, any other constituency than our churches to speak truth to power. Um, that's, that's what brings us together. Um, and so, uh, you know, the, the issues, uh, they seem to continue to come. Uh, and the voice of the faithful, the voice of the church, dare I say the voice of the preacher, for me, the voice of the black preacher cannot be muted during these times. But uh, when, when the times are calling for, for a trumpet, a flute just won't do. And so we need the faithful to stand up uh, and we need uh, to hear uh, and we need to speak um, and not in the 1950s way, right? I never want you to think that, that uh, we cannot create scenes from the 1950s, but understand that racism and social injustice and the division that causes democracy to be shattered and hope to be stillborn or laid dormant. You know, th these, things, these things are ethical and moral issues and we have to make sure we're leading uh, on, that, on that plane as well. I couldn't agree more. And uh, speaking truth to power does seem a bit like a, like a never ending fight, right? Uh, it is it is continuous, but um, you know one of the the interesting parts about the the first notion for what the ministerium does is that we work uh, most vigorously during the legislative session, and so from January to April every year, um, that's the uh, 
that's the the really uh, that's the weeds of it, the sausage making. Um, and so we're uh, in season and out of season. That's a religious expression, but we use that uh, to say that look, there are times that we're in season, and that's when legislative session is in. But then when we're out of season, that gives us a chance to have a little breather and to think differently and to strategize, uh, as opposed to playing all of that all of that uh, that defense. We get to play some offense and. Uh, our hope is that we are not simply seen as a force when it comes to fighting things, but we are seen as a strategic partner with a collaboration with a myriad of wonderful group of people that are all concerned about right and justice and seeking morality and making sure that the democratic systems that we love so dearly uh, are cherished. I would, I would say, Dr. Hicks, you've made that goal um, quite clear. Um, as we close, um, share with us and our viewers um, how someone can reach you or learn more about the ministerium and your work and get involved. Oh, well, thank you. Now, uh, the best way to see what we've done chronologically in 2021 is to go to our Facebook page, uh, which is the Indianapolis Ministerium. Uh, that was the first thing that we set up when we did our first uh, faith community consultation uh, since we've had vision beyond Indianapolis. And so the uh, Indiana Ministerium dot org, Indiana Ministerium dot org. Uh, that's where you can find our website and uh, you can contact me. Area code three one seven two zero five one zero two two. Uh, and you can reach me at the Northwest Vision Development Center. And I am the proud pastor of First Baptist Church, North Indianapolis. And so uh, with this, uh, we, we thank you for the opportunity to share and appreciate the work that you're doing and lift you all up. Thank you. And you are, you are an appropriately proud pastor, it seems to me, I, I might add. Our guest today has been Dr. Ivan Douglas Hicks. Uh, and this is another program on behalf of the Bridge Alliance. And what we're trying to do here is fix America's broken democracy. This has been David Nevins for City Biz List. Dr. Hicks, thank you for joining us. And all of you, thank you for joining us. <laughs>